Okay, welcome to JavaScript quiz for beginners. When I say beginners, I mean relative beginners. Hopefully you have some experience with uh, HTML and CSS. I'm making this for my students, uh, so they have some background in that. So what I'm gonna look at in this video is things like events, such as on click. So we click a button, something happens. Um, conditional statements, so if we're on question two, what, what does that mean? What, what happens in our program? And, and changing some text on the screen, and also showing and hiding images. You'll, you'll see that and actually playing some sounds. So there's quite a few things in here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so this is what it's going to look like at the end. Now the questions might be a little different, but uh, this is basically the idea of what we're working on. So we've got a title, we've got a question, and we've got two potential answers. Now we could have three, we could have four, but to keep it simple, we're just gonna look at two for now. So the question one is, what is the capital of Japan? I live there, and so we should know that the capital of Japan is Tokyo. Now I'm gonna click this, and let's see what happens. Okay, so we got a nice little green check mark. We had played a sound, and we switched to the next question, which is, what is the capital of South Korea? Now, the capital of South Korea is Seoul, but let's go ahead and choose Busan and see what happens. Okay, so we had a different sound, um, and we went to the next question. What is the capital of China? Let's go ahead and put Beijing. Okay, and you can see now it says game over. We, again, sound and green check mark, and now we see our score at the end. So that is what we're going to do in this video. So... Buckle up, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna give you this. Uh, you can download this, I'll put a link down below somewhere. Um, so since this is focused on JavaScript, my students have already done HTML and CSS, so they should know mostly how to do most of this stuff. Uh, I wanna focus on the JavaScript in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Genie, and here is the code. Now the CSS is here, HTML is here, and our script is down at the bottom. So we're just putting everything into one file. So how I coded this was I put the first question in already, and then I put the first two answers in. Now I gave each thing, uh, each, I should say element, I shouldn't call it a thing, I give each element its own ID. So we have a div for the question, so that's the text of the question. We have a button for answer one. We have a button for answer two. And you'll see here we have a div that contains two images. Okay, image correct and image wrong. Notice how I've named everything, you know, IMG correct, IMG wrong, uh, div question. It's very, very clear what everything is. Now, if I go to my folder and the files, you'll see here there's buzzer.mp3, there's correct.png, ding.mp3, um, the HTML files I'm working on, and wrong.png. So I just put them in the same folder to keep things easy and simple to understand. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So if I go back to here and notice I click nothing happens. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of that first. So what we're gonna do is when we click a button, we're gonna do on click equals, and I'm just gonna put blanks there for now, and I'm gonna do the same thing for question two. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to create a function at the bottom of my page here that deals with processing the clicks. So I'm gonna make a function, I'm gonna call it process, and I'm gonna go ahead and put A in here, and I'll explain that in a, in a minute, okay? So I've created a function, I've got function, I've got process, I called it process, and I'm sending it, I'm gonna be sending it some information here, you'll see in a second. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to check the answers first. That's gonna be our first part of this. So. I have two buttons, so when I click the first button, I'm going to call the process method, and I'm gonna send it a value of one. For my second button, process, and a value of two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down here, and just to show you that this is working, I'm gonna type alert, and I'll just say A. 
Okay, so I'm gonna see, does that work if I do that? Yes, it does, fantastic. Um, but it opens up in a new window or new tab, that's okay. So when I click Tokyo, okay, I have a little pop-up here and it says one. When I click Kyoto, pops up and it says two. Okay, so what this is telling us is that when I click button A1, it calls the method called process. Okay, and this value of one is sent here. So that's the same as typing A equals one. When I click process two, it's the same as saying A equals two. So what I wanna do is I need to keep track of which question we're on. So I'm gonna create a variable and call it Q. And when we start the program, when we start the page, we're on question one. Okay. So I'm gonna delete that alert. I don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna type if Q equals equals one. Okay. Notice how I put the closing, oops, closing braces right away. So if the question equals one, I have two possible buttons. I have button one, which is Tokyo, and I have button two, which is Kyoto. Now we know the answer is Tokyo. So in the case of question one, if, if A equals one, it's the correct answer. So we'll deal with that. If it's not one, it's the wrong answer, and we'll deal with that in a second as well. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So we click the, click the button. It's either a one or two. Okay, so when we start the program, we're on question one. So if the question equals one, and the answer is one, so the question capital of Tokyo, or capital of Japan, A1 is Tokyo we know that that is the correct answer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two new methods. Call it function write. I'm not gonna put anything in there. And we're gonna call it function, oops, function wrong. So what we wanna do is if we have the right answer, we're gonna call this method write. If we have the wrong answer, we're gonna call the method wrong. Now, right now they don't do anything, but let's go ahead and just test this. And again, I don't know why my students refuse to do this, but you should do what I'm doing, is you should test this. So we'll call this right. Okay. And they just keep typing and typing and typing and then they can't figure out what the problem is because they've been typing for so long. So you should make a couple changes and test it. So let's go ahead and test that. So click Tokyo, I should see right. Click Kyoto, and I should see wrong. So already it's giving us the information that we want. Okay, so you can see how it's pretty, pretty simple to do this. Um, I could continue with that, but let me just go ahead and cover a few other things here. Uh, so I don't wanna do the alert. Okay, if you recall, what I did was I played a sound and I showed the uh, check marks, okay? So let's go ahead and do that here. So for, excuse me, so for showing the check mark, okay? So I'm gonna do document dot get element by ID, because we called it, we gave it an ID, and it was div, or sorry, image correct, And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change its class to show. Now, where did this come from? Okay. So if I go up to here, I created a class called show. And what it does is it displays it as a block. Okay. You can see there's also a class called hide, which is display none. So if I'm right, I wanna show correct image. 
if I'm wrong, I want to show the image wrong. So let's test this. Notice I made a couple changes and I'm testing it to make sure it works. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click Tokyo and I got my check mark. How cool is that? Now let me try and click Kyoto and see what happens. Ooh. Okay. Not quite what we wanted. Okay. So there's a little trick here is we have to realize that we only want to show one of these at a time. Okay, so to be safe, what we need to do is this. And I'll explain it in a second. So when we get it right, we want to show the image correct. When we get it wrong, we want to hide image wrong. When we have it wrong, we want to show image wrong. And we want to hide image correct. So let's go ahead and test that. Tokyo green, Kyoto red, Tokyo green, Kyoto red. Okay, so already we have a basic functioning quiz page. Okay, now it's not a very exciting quiz, of course, um, but we can go ahead and add a couple other things. We also said that we wanted to play a sound. So I'm going to go ahead and type ver ding, this is our correct sound, equals new audio, oops, ding.mp3. I probably should have renamed that to correct. And then what we'll do is we'll do ding, dint, ding.play. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that for wrong. And that was buzzer. And we're going to play the buzzer sound. Okay, and again, and this is a little fast, but you can you know rewind, go, you know, pause the screen. So let's go ahead and I've saved it. I'm going to click that again, and let's see what happens. I'll click Tokyo. Okay, we hear the ding. Click Kyoto, and we hear the buzzer. Okay, so pretty easy, pretty straightforward so far. Okay, so just to recap, okay, we, we have a functioning quiz here. Okay, so we've got a button, we've got a question, we've got two buttons, I could have had a third button, but two makes it easy, I think. Um, we have a div that has hidden images, and depending on the result, we show and hide different images. And then we're processing. Okay, so we start the program, we're on question one. We send one or two, so in this case, question one, answer one is correct. And even if you have like 10, 10 possible answers, all you have to do is do the correct answer and all the other ones will be wrong, which is kind of nice. So we could have added a third, fourth or whatever option. Okay, we have two functions because they're gonna be repeated over and over again. So if the function is right, okay? So if we're correct, we're going to show the correct image we're going to hide the wrong image and we're going to play this sound. And for wrong, we do opposite, I guess. We show the wrong image, we hide the correct image, and then we play the buzzer sound. So far, so good. So then the next thing we have to deal with is how do we add the next question? Okay. So it's, this is pretty straightforward. Okay. So once we have checked our answers, Give us a little space here. Say, show the next question. Okay. So if we're on question one, where do we go? Okay. Logic says question two. So all we have to do is type Q, Q plus plus. What that will do is that will add one to the question. Okay. So if the question equals two. We started at one, now we're on two. What we want to do is we want to update the question. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new function. Yeah, I like functions, they're very helpful. Function update question. Okay. And what we need to do is we need a question 
We need answer one, we need answer two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do document, not document, document, dot get element by ID, same thing we did before, you can copy and paste that. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to our next question. So it's the ID here is div question. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that here. And whatever this question is, we're gonna put here. And I'll show you that in a second. With the buttons, we can do the same thing. So watch what I do here. And I'm gonna say button btn a1 equals a1. And I'm just gonna copy that. Okay, once you get one working, it's pretty easy to copy and paste. Equals a2. And again, just to remind you, div question button a1, button a2 comes from the ID. Div question, button A1, button A2. Okay. So we have a function, means we have to call it. So for question two, we're gonna say update question. Okay. We need three things. Notice the quotation marks because they're something called strings. So this is gonna be Q2. What is the capital of South Korea? Okay, and this time we want the second one to be correct, so we'll say Busan, and we'll say Seoul. So what'll happen is when we get here, this question, then this answer, then this answer are sent here. So question, answer one, answer two. So what is the capital of Seoul, or what is the capital of South Korea? Busan, Seoul, and we put that into the that section there. Let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so it doesn't matter what we get, Tokyo, correct. Notice how it changed. What is the capital of South Korea? Okay, now if I click this, nothing happens because we haven't coded it yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we're gonna go back up to this section of process. So if Q equals one, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it. Okay, so now the question is if Q equals two. The correct answer in this case is two because it's the second button. So let's see, where is that? So this is the correct answer. That's gonna go into button A2. Okay. So that's all we gotta do is copy and paste and change what needs to be changed. Okay. So let's go ahead and try it again. Okay, we'll do Kyoto's wrong. Seoul's correct. Okay. Notice how nothing changed because we didn't code that yet. And if I click this, nothing's gonna happen because now we're on question three. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it short. I'm not gonna do question three, but what I'm gonna do is once you get to the, your last question, how do we deal with that? Okay, so yeah, we do Q equals three, Q equals four, Q equals five, blah, 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 blah. But whatever that last question is, okay, in this case, it's gonna be question three. So if Q equals three, okay. So at this point, we can, we can do something like this. We can do update question. And, and there's other ways to do this, but so what I did was, the question was, how did I do this? Uh, I forget, oh yeah, thank you for playing. And then the first button was game, and the second button was game over. Okay, don't forget the closing brace there. So again, let's go ahead and test it. Okay, Tokyo, so thank you for playing, game over click nothing happens and that's basically how it works 
The only thing I didn't do here was add scoring. So let me show you that real quick. So remember, anything that we need to keep track of, we need a variable. So I'm going to make a variable for the score. So variable score equals zero. When we start the game, it's zero. Okay. If we get the right answer, we're going to add one to score. If we get it wrong, nothing happens. We don't have to do anything with that there. So when we get to the last question, we need to do document get element by ID inner HTML equals score colon quote plus score. Okay, so note where the quotation marks are. And we got to put something here. So that's what this div is for. Div ID equals div result. I want that information to go here. So call this div score. Hope you see that the naming is very logical. So let's go ahead and try it. So let's get them all correct. So Tokyo, Seoul. Oops, game over. What did I do wrong? Hmm, missed something there. Uh, question equals three. There is a problem. What did I, did I spell something wrong? Uh, it's not div score, it's div result. Okay, my bad. Uh, let's try it over time. I should have called it div score probably. Um, Tokyo, Seoul, score two. Refresh, let's get them both wrong. Score zero. Okay, we can try it again. We can try Tokyo and Busan. Okay, and there you have it. A very simple but workable quiz. Okay, once this part is working, uh, all, it, all, all you need to do then is to code all of your answers and all of your questions. Okay. Now there's other ways to simplify this code. Um, I, I made this intentionally simple so my students could follow this because um, they're still in the early stages of learning this. But yeah, of course we could clean this up a little bit. So let me just go through that one more time real quick. And so we're given in this case some HTML, some CSS. For the CSS, the really important things are this hide and show class, because that's what's going to hide and show the images. And then you see that we have a div for the question. We have a button A1, button A2. And if I if I wanted a third button, I could have, you know, I could have added a third button. It's not a big deal. Um, when we start the game, the image correct and image wrong are class hide, which means we can't see them because of this CSS. We start on question one. We start with a score of zero. When the user presses a button, we call the process method, and we either send a one or a two to it. Okay, so question equals one, answer one. That is correct, otherwise it's wrong. Question two, answer two. That is correct, otherwise it's wrong. Okay. We show the next question. We add one question, Q. If it's two, we update question, question, answer, answer. Again, you might have three answers or four answers, however you want to do that. Uh, and then our last question, we just update the question like this, and then we update the results to show the score. Now again, you may do it a little, a little differently. You might want to show the score each time. That's really up to you. Um, in our correct function, we got it right. We show the image correct, and we hide the image wrong. We play a sound, and we add one to the score. In our wrong function, we do the opposite. We show the wrong image. I don't know how that makes sense. We hide the correct image, and then we play the buzzer sound. And for update question, you know, we send the question, answer one, answer two. Now again, you might have answer three, you might have answer four if you're going to have four, but the principle is the same. And so as long as you name everything consistently, it's pretty easy to write this code. So that is that. Again, I'll put a link to uh, some of the code down below, but hopefully you can follow the video and use it as it is. Uh, so yeah, I guess that is going to be it. So thanks for watching and keep on coding. Take care.